This run was done with Cycle Overload and Plasgrid Catalyst, the latter of which being the main focus. Plasgrid Catalyst is a pretty interesting overclock by virtue of how NG plays true solos and how NG plays the game in general, really. NG, in true solo especially, is a very fragile class. Uh, because he doesn't have any real survival tools. Flats are okay to parkour on, but compared to what the other classes have, NG's guns, weapons, and equipment are far less flexible and often take time and proper placement to use. As a result, NG kind of has to set up holds and he has to do them before the first one hits. Now, I, NG has a lot of tools to make those holds pretty safe though. Repellent is one such example, and is pretty pretty busted if you know how to use it. Especially in combination with NG's other tools, like his nades, especially proxies and solo, or uh, turret whip, EM discharge, so on and so forth. NG just has a lot of tools that make holding a really great option for him. So you really want to be just setting up holds, and you want to be doing them as far in as possible as soon as possible. As you can see, I'm running straight forward trying to hit a cave and maybe a nice place to hold. Spot a small tunnel here, and on the other end of this tunnel it'll probably be an opening. I can probably block off this tunnel and set up a holder, and lo and behold, yep. This is a nice spot. So I start setting up. This is right before the first cave. So it'll be nice to push into the first cave after the storm is done. And setting up this one of hold. Clearing out some salt crystals for easier mobility in the future and setting up propellant. Turrets are also a nice zoning tool, just killing individual grunts and swarmers and whatnot that venture too far into your personal space. Speaking of which, personal space is one of the things that NG does struggle with. It's why Breach Cutter is considered so powerful, because if a grunt invades your melee range, stuff can be kind of dangerous. Warthog is fine at picking off individual grunts, but when there's more than a couple, ECR, or explosive chemical rounds, and breach cutter are really the only options you have. Charge Fracture doesn't stun and is really slow at killing. And Plastery Catalyst in specific takes setup, which is one of the reasons why I don't think it's an amazing overflow, because NG has a lot of tools that Shine would set up. For example, Turret Whip. And especially in solo, Proxy Mines as well. I've actually done uh, a solo with Proxy Mines and Plastery Catalyst, but I ended up scrapping it because Catalyst just did zero work and I felt like it could do some if I pushed it. If you watched my Fatboy True solo, you would see that <laughs> Given proper repellent setup and proper positioning, proxy nades can basically solo entire swarms. Especially in combination with something like turret whip as secondary holding power. All this is to say, NG is not really lacking for tools that make holding easy. So then, what does NG want in a weapon? Well, Breach Cutter is a pretty good exemplar of what that is, which is a lot of pushing power and self-defense value. Um, Last Street Catalyst is pretty terrible at actually getting a lot of value when going into new caves, because to get any benefit you have to place down a plat and then you put your cursor over that plat. And in the time you spend doing that, the enemies may have moved, or you 
may have been crept on by other enemies. This is why I brought shredders in this run, because they make it very easy to ignore small amounts of enemies. Whereas, while well, Warthog is okay, and Shred is eh, mediocre at dealing with small amounts of stragglers, they both cost valuable, valuable time and attention. Which is why we don't kill Brood Nexuses in True Solos most of the time. Because those Swarmers, those two Swarmers that it spawns every once in a while, are really not worth the time, ammo, attention that it takes to both kill that Brood Nexus and kill the burst of Swarmers that comes from it. I got through that cave pretty fast because it was very small and my hold was very close to it, which is pretty lucky generation. And as a result, I get to push through the first cave pretty early on into the run. Some of my NG solos spend two swarms holding in the first cave, but in this one you'll see what I consider more or less ideal pacing, where I spend one swarm holding in the first room push through it immediately and very fast after the first swarm. Get through the dirt and start setting the hole. And now I have tons of breathing room. I can more or less relax until the next swarm, which is what I do here. Stop, smell the roses, listen to the music, deal with this wave that tends to spawn right before the next announced storm. At about 7 minutes, the announced storm hits around 8. And here's the next announced storm. Nice trick in showcase here. If you have a upward slope, you can set up your plots such that younglings can't get through, while other enemies will still respect the repellent. I prefer repellent on plastic catalyst because bugs blocking line of sight to your plots is a great way to stop getting value out of the overclock. Speaking of shard diffractor strategies, it's funny how the three season two secondaries that they added, they intentionally made to be impossible to reload cancel. But somehow, shard diffractor still can be reload canceled. The way it functions is after you fire, there's a refractory period where you have to wait for the battery to recharge, but if you just switch your pickaxe ever so briefly, you can start firing again. Which makes charge speed pretty worthless on this weapon, outside of uh, on stuff like overdrive booster or automated beam controller where you have to go all in, and the max size can actually be a downside. At the very least, a hold like this makes the overclock look pretty strong, which it is actually at holding an area 
far away from you while you sit in complete safety and can devote all of your attention into holding M1 on a platform. In less idyllic circumstances, it can be really rough to have to spend that much time looking at a platform. <laughs> and if it's closer to you, like there, you really can't use the explosion at all because it does a frankly pretty ridiculous amount of self damage. Try with is much better and not doing self damage, but even that's dangerous on occasion. Skip that nature because I have 16 in the bank and I know I'm about to finish. kill this breeder for the same reason. And Molly being over there for whatever reason leads to this sketchy escape sequence, which I think particularly highlights some of the things that I don't like so much about Black Creek Catalyst. And honestly, Shard in general, to some extent. A bit of a misjudgment in distance there leads to me blowing my entire health bar away with a singular explosion. And now I'm left with a secondary that slows me when I use it, making this escape pretty sketchy. One of the nice things about Breach Cutter is that to get value out of it, you switch your secondary, you click once, and you obliterate a swarm. Whereas with Shard, you have to do this. At this point, I'm kind of flustered, uh, and I don't hit the resupply, and I definitely have the space to, and the health to. But it ends up alright in the end, despite this resupply also being empty. Dig through those plots. And I get a little bit of sweet tooth value here. Extra movement speed is nice. I don't know why I don't kill the treasure there. I really should have. If you have an opportunity to kill treasures relatively safely, you definitely should. And I end up getting punished here again. Just the anxiety of 
that very dangerous period catching up to me. Speaking of danger, there's a bit more. In case things aren't exciting enough for you. Younglings incoming almost in my run here. But they blast me back into a fluster fleet, which doesn't uh, matter. Either. So, thanks to that youngling. And there's the last fester fleet, and there's the solo. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. All the engagement things. Happy mining out there, rock and stone.